Can someone tell me what's up with Genshin and masks? Fatui have them, Hillichurls have them, Abysslings have them, uh, these guys. It seems like a lot of our humanoid enemies with questionable powers have them. So what's the deal? Why are they masking up? And does it even matter? What, you thought this video was about eyes? Why, just because of the title mentions them? Okay, well, you're right. I do want to talk about eyes today, but in order to do that, we'll need to take a little trip down to Maskland, because that's what got me thinking about eyes in the first place. Quick disclaimer. This is a theory video. While I will be referencing a lot of things from the game that are definitely true in canon, please recognize that the way I'm stitching them together might not be. Please don't take this video as fact as it is only speculation until new content comes out that either confirms or refutes it. And as always, please make sure to do your own independent research and don't take what I say as an absolute truth. I am only human, I will get things wrong. Got all that? Great, let's get to it. To start, let's take a look at what we know. As of version 1.6, there are three enemy classes focused on masks. Uh, plus child, who's a boss and gets his own mention. These classes are Hillichurls, Abysslings, and the Fatui. Please note that I will not be discussing Yaksha masks, just because I think the Yakshas deserve their own deep dive at some point in the future. Anyway, Hillichurl masks can be split into four main types, Hilly, Nitta, Lara, and Sama. If you're not aware, Hillichurls have kind of an evolutionary process of sorts, where they start off as Hillies, then they can grow up big and strong like a Mita or a Lara, before they grow old and turn into Samas, or so we think. This is based on their in-game descriptive text, which is provided to us by the scholar L. Musk, not Ella Musk. This is her dad. And uh, his reliability we're not 100% certain on. Hilly masks are the most basic of the masks, but they're also the masks that dragged me down this rabbit hole to begin with, because I couldn't figure out why they had no holes. I mean, without holes for their eyes, how do they see? Without holes for their mouth, how do they eat or breathe? So I recruited the help of some of the lovely Hillitrill anthropologists on the Conria Discord server, link in the description, and they informed me that because Hillitrills have words for colors, and are seen cooking food, that they are definitely not blind and they definitely do eat. Oh, I know, I know. It seems like a really boring answer. The Hillichurls probably just take off their masks to eat, right? And maybe the mask is somewhat transparent so they can see through it? Normally I'd agree, but you see, beneath the mask in the model, there's nothing. No face, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, just fur. You could argue that this is just a trick to save polygons for rendering. But is it really? I mean, characters who wear eye patches like Kaya and Beto or masks like the Fatui have their faces rendered. Okay, some of them do. I can't actually confirm that there are faces for the Fatui units like the Gunners since I don't have the models, but I'm going to ignore them for a moment because there's evidence to suggest that Hillitrolls don't have faces at all, or at least not complete faces. I, I mean, I suppose Hillichurls could have a face behind their furry mane things, but that would not explain how they can see while wearing their masks and also through all of that hair. In fact, there's visual evidence of part of a face for Hillichurls, but not an entire face. Let me explain. Mitta and Lara masks actually have eye holes, but no visible eyes, and they still lack a mouth. But then you get to the Sama masks, and those have two eye slots, just like the Mitta and the Laras. But we know that those eye slots aren't functional. And how do we know this? Because Sama churls only have one eye. One eye. And that eye looks out through the mouth of the mask. You see that? You see You see the little thing? You see, you see a wiggle? You see? It's following. Okay, make it stop. Make, I don't want to look at that. Just make him go away. Just go away. Ugh. 
Anyway, if Somaturals have one eye, then that implies that Hillies, Middas, and Lara's might have one eye too, because that one eye is huge and right in the middle of their face area. So it's not like they've just lost one eye or grew one eye, I think. So why do Mitta and Lara masks have two eye slits? If they only have one eye, or any eyes at all. I mean, they still can't see out of their masks, right? And speaking of creatures that have masks, but no faces, did you know that abyss mages also have no faces? I'm serious, there's no visible faces. And you know how I know that? Just watch these little jerks. Whenever they warp, they take their mask off, then they pop it back on again. Why? No idea. Well, I, I have one idea, but we'll get to that. What I really want to focus on here is the fact that abyss mages have the same furry manes as the hillaturals, wear a mask, and also lack a visible face. It's really coincidental. Abyss heralds and lectors, on the other hand, also have masks, but it's not like we can tell whether or not they have faces underneath. I don't even think we can check because I think Mihoyo has their masks rendered as part of their heads. Still, just like the Lara Turtles, Abyss Lectors and Heralds have two glowing eyes. At least I think Heralds have two glowing eyes. I mean, are, are those eyes? I think those are eyes. In fact, I'd argue that the Lector's mask is actually pretty similar to a Lara Churl mask. This is pretty weird if you consider the progressive evolutionary chain of Hillichurls to be a similar progression to that of the Abysslings. It implies that an Abyss Mage could grow up to be a Lector or Herald or whatever their element equivalent name is. That's pretty weird. Anyway, we'll come back to this, but for now, let's talk Fatui. Mask wearing among the Fatui appears to be mandatory, regardless of rank. Fatui members only take off their masks on rare occasions in the story when they're trying to pretend that they're not Fatui. But still, every single Fatui agent, the assassins, gunners, season mages, all of them are completely masked. Interestingly, only three types of Fatui agents have delusions on their outfit, and those three have both eyes marked or cut into their masks, while the remaining Fatui only have one glowing eye. Just one. In fact, the Hydro and Cryo Gunners don't even look like they have a hole for a second eye. Just one eye hole. So Seasin mages, assassins, and harbingers all use delusions instead of visions, except for Child, who has both, but we don't count him. And since delusions are unique to the Fatui, and the Fatui are the only human organization to make mask wearing mandatory, I gotta wonder, is there a connection there? Now we've only met three harbingers, but while we can see both Senora and Scaramouche's mask, Scars is on the top of his hat, their delusions are not visible on their body. That leaves Child, whose mask is visible on his head and whose delusion is on the back of his vision, so let's talk about him for a bit. Child is an oddity in Genshin because he has both a vision, a delusion, and he also has abyssal training, courtesy of an impromptu three-month accidental vacation to the abyss when he was a child. This gives him basically three options while fighting. Option one is his normal fighting stance where he uses Hydro without the use of a mask. There's honestly not much to talk about here because in this form he's basically like any average vision user. Option two, however, has him swapping from his vision powers to his Electro Delusion while donning his mask. Anyway, he's not too different power-wise, but he does gain a couple of new tricks. It's kind of hard to tell if anything else changes with him on like a mental level because Child is a little unhinged to begin with. But option three is where things get weird. He undergoes a full body transformation, which he's dubbed Foul Legacy. This transformation also morphs his mask to the point where there's no longer any holes for the eyes or the mouth. Unless you think that big gem in the middle is his eye. It could be, I have no idea. The point is, the mask changes, and this is something that's unique to Child, since he has some ideas about how to access Abyssal power. That may be why Foul Legacy's design has a lot in common with the Abyss Heralds and Lectors. 
In fact, several of his attacks are identical to the one the Abyss Heralds have. He also floats like an Abyss Lector while attacking with both Hydro and Electro, something he was incapable of doing before with his vision and his delusion. And he also has one of only three instances of the Galaxy Cape in the game, the other two belonging to the notorious Paimon and the other to Dainsleaf, the Bow Keeper. Normally, I'd suggest that this is just an aesthetic thing. But Dainsleaf is wearing a half mask over the right side of his face, just like Senora. We know this half mask is hiding some abyssal corruption, and you can see it peeking out from the bottom of the mask, but Child also has ties to abyssal power, and he also has something weird going on with his right eye. That's kind of weirdly coincidental, and implies that Senora might have something weird going on with her right eye too that we just haven't seen yet. What's that you say? There's nothing wrong with Child's eye? Take another look at Child's delusion form. Notice that he only has his right eye visible. He doesn't have a left eye when he's using his delusion. Child's stronger delusion form has him using only one eye. Okay, so Child delusion form has no left eye while wearing a mask. So why is this important? Well, Senora is only seen wielding Cryo while wearing her mask. Child doesn't use his delusion without wearing his mask, and he doesn't use his abyssal powers without one either. And in the manga, Diluc uses his mask when using his father's delusion, which, by the way, is the same delusion that killed his father, who at the time was not wearing a mask. So was the lack of mask the reason Crepus died? It's definitely a possibility. This has led me to believe that delusions require masks in order to be used safely. But since Abyss mages, lectors, and heralds are from, well, the Abyss, and also have masks instead of faces, there's also a possibility that delusions might run or draw from abyssal power. This would make delusions the perfect counterpart to visions, as one would come from the Abyss and the other from Celestia. Weirded out by all of the instances of singular eyes, I decided there were enough coincidences to warrant some out-of-game research. And that, friends, is how I stumbled upon the Eye of Ra. Yes, Ra, the Egyptian sun god. I spent all week reading Egyptian mythology in my spare time. That stuff is wild. Anywho, uh, quick disclaimer, Egyptian mythos is a little more fluid than other mythologies. Egyptian myths are more like mythemes, meaning rather than being a specific story about a specific god, they tend to have a lot of room for variation. So as long as the general moral of the story gets across, it doesn't matter so much the specifics. It's hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean. Now the Eye of Ra, is the sun god Ra's right eye. But it's also separate from him and represents his feminine counterpart, meaning it always manifests as a goddess while still being an actual eye in some myths, but always functioning as an extension of Ra's power independently. The eye's purpose is to subdue Ra's enemies and is most commonly symbolized by a lioness, cobra, flames, the red sky of sunrise, and the morning star of dawn. I'll be referencing this in a later video, just make note of it. Ra fights every day against the forces of chaos which threaten the cosmic order of Ma'at. In the myth known as the destruction of mankind from the Book of the Heavenly Cow, Ra sends his eye to punish the humans that denied his authority. This eye manifests as the furious goddess Hathor, or Bastet, or Sekhmet, who massacres everybody without mercy. She then goes rogue, so to prevent her from killing all of humanity on accident, he tricks her by making her drink red wine, which she mistakes for blood in order to get her drunk so she'll calm down and go home. Which she does. And for some reason, this myth reminds me so much of the sustainer of heavenly principles. She's upholding the will of the divine, smiting humans with her blood red eye covered cubes. Incidentally, when the eye is not near Ra, he's considered weakened. And since he's the god of the sun, the Egyptians associated this state of Ra 
with a solar eclipse because the light is weak. So which civilization fell during an eclipse? This whole story surrounding the One Eye has some weird and uncomfortable implications for all the enemies we're fighting that only have one visible eye. And then there's this guy. Remember him? This black snake with two different colored eyes? I actually do have something to mention about these two differently colored eyes. You see, there was an opposing eye to Ra's right, and that is the Eye of Horus, the left eye. Horus wasn't a sun god, exactly, but he was considered a sky deity. His left eye was said to represent the moon, and his right eye was said to represent the sun. Unlike the Eye of Ra, which manifests as a separate goddess when it leaves him, Horus loses his left eye in a conflict with the god Set. Set usually steals it and does something horrible to it, leaving another deity to retrieve it and return it to Horus. Sometimes there's some, uh, qu qu questionable <laughs> activities that result in the eye being ingested by Set, who then births the god Thoth from his head, and then Thoth is supposed to be the eye, reincarnated. Other times, though, Thoth is the one who heals Horus's eye and isn't born from it. Listen, I said Egyptian myth was fluid. I meant it. This cycle of losing the eye and having it returned to Horus was associated with the waxing and the waning of the moon. This is strengthened by the idea that Thoth was considered a lunar deity and, incidentally, was also considered the father of alchemy. If you want to learn more about why that matters here, you may want to watch my video on the Emerald Tablet. I'll leave a link in the description. Some myths even consider Ra and Horus to be the same god, calling them Ra Horakti, or Ra who is Horus of the Two Horizons. Let's circle back to the Genesis Snake for a moment, as I have called him. That is his name now, Genesis Snake. I believe this is supposed to represent the duality of two opposing forces, the sun and the moon, or Celestia and the Abyss. Why a snake? Well, both the Eye of Ra and the Eye of Horus were considered to be Wajit eyes, and Wajit being a goddess that takes the form of a snake and is typically depicted as a snake encircling a big, round, red ball that's supposedly the sun. The sun in general was often depicted alongside a cobra, as was Egyptian royalty, and the Eye of Ra was also sometimes called the Hathor of the Four Faces and was depicted by a set of four cobras facing each cardinal direction. The god of chaos, Apep, was also said to be a giant serpent, and he was Ra's greatest adversary. In fact, he was known as the World Encircler, which many of us might recognize today as the Ouroboros. Now tell me, who in Genshin has the constellation Ouroboros? I'll tell you who. It's Dainsleaf, the bow keeper, the keeper of the world tree, the former royal guard of Conria with a cosmic cape like Child and Paimon, a mask on the right side of his face like Kaya and Senora with a weird blue power that has an eerie organic look to counterbalance the cubicle ordered abilities of the sustainer herself. In the same way returning Ra's eye to him restored his full power, the Animoculi and the Geoculi are, well, oculi that we return to the statues of seven. Oculi, meaning eye in Latin, suggests that these eyes are eyes of elements being offered to God in exchange for gifts. For what purpose? I'm not really sure, but there may be a connection with eyes or the ability to see and perceive being associated with obtaining or restoring one's power. Consider too that visions are known as the eyes of God, while delusions are known as evil eyes in Chinese and the traveler who possesses neither has the ability of elemental sight. Gaining these eyes grants the bearers great power, just like the Eye of Ra. Only visions and delusions do not appear as independent entities, unless you count gemstones as independent entities. But they're not sentient, I don't think. The visions, being a gift from the divine, are granted based on unknown criteria and do not appear to have any obvious setbacks. Delusions, on the other hand, appear to have a slightly more pronounced cost. Now this is where things get a little dicey, so bear with me. Abyss lectors have a line in their description that says they tell of a power that corrodes human intellect. 
we can probably assume that this power is related to the abyss, since all abysslings preach the power of the abyss, and since the abyss herald speaks to Dainsleaf about his corruption, I'm going to make the assumption that abyssal power might be the same power that corrupts the mind and corrodes human intellect. This may even be the same kind of effect that Zhang Li was talking about during the quest with Kun Jun and Ejdaha. The erosion. It's a bit of a stretch, but it makes sense when you think about it. Durin, for example, came from the Conrian underground, but was corrupted as heck and possibly even uh, delusional. He was born of abyssal power, maybe, and if he was, that would explain a lot. Dainsleaf comments in the Travail trailer that his memory is fading, and that might have something to do with the corruption that the Abyss Herald commented on. So what if the more you lose your senses, the more delusional you become, the more you lose your sense of self, your face, what if that's the reason why the Abysslings wear masks but have no faces? What if Hillichurls are people who were corrupted so badly that they've lost their sense of self to the point where they've just become indistinguishable from any other Hillichurls? I mean, we know that most, if not all, of the Abysslings are the people of Conria. So what's stopping Hillichurls from being people too? I mean, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Abysslings and Hillichurls are likely two different strains of the same kind of creature. Consider the following design choices. Masks that evolve as the entity gets stronger. A large furry mane that encircles the head and the neck. A complete lack of a visible face. Two moth-like antenna and similar markings on their clothing and body. And then if we expand our search a little to include child, who has ties to the abyss, things get more interesting. He has just about everything in common with abysslings and hilly churls, as well as something new. Do you see those spikes on his back? Notice their shape. Those spikes happen to match the spikes that grow on the back of the Samachurls through their manes. And if you want to go really wild, take another look at Kaya. While he has no foul legacy transformation, he is from Conria and he does have a lot in common with the Hillichurls and the Abysslings. He has the mane around his shoulder the antenna type thing on the top of his head. I know it's his hair, but it kind of looks like an antenna. He has the mask, if you count his eye patch as one. He even has similar markings. And heck, even his skills are a near perfect match for a cryo abyss mage. When one of those attacks, they normally shoot out an icicle at you in one direction. Kaya does the same thing, only with a wider range. When an abyss mage is regenerating their shield, they have these icicles swirl around them, just like when Kaya uses his elemental burst. And while it doesn't help his combat role at all, Kaya does have a constellation that gives him one of those bubble shields. This effectively makes him an uncorrupted abyss mage, while Child is more like an abyss herald. And Kaya has a bunch of hidden references to eyes on top of that. Kaya's constellation is Pavo Oslius, or Oslius? Pavo Oslius. Listen, I'm not good at pronunciation. Anyway, Pavo means peacock and Oslius means eye. Together, the constellation name is Peacock's Eye, or Eye in the Peacock's Tail Feather, since the tail feather is the reason why peacocks are associated with eyes to begin with. Not only is his constellation focusing on the eyes of the peacock feather by name, but the actual eye of the peacock itself is located as his first constellation, which is named Excellent Blood. Then there's Ball. In her very first appearance during the Archon quest of version 1.6, she's shown with only one eye, her right eye, flashing red just before she cuts down Kazuha's friend. This is the same ball that enacted the Vision Hunt decree, or the hunt for the eyes of God, 
only to then reappear with a strange eye-covered structure behind her that's shaped like the icon from the Battle Pass. And don't forget about little wind spirit Venti here. This little bit of cute pie only has one eye. In fact, if you pay attention to each of his appearances as his story progresses, you'll note that he gains a second eye, but it's small and incredibly disproportionate to his original eye. It's weird. Also, why the heck does Venti look like the littlest, tiniest, itty bittiest abyss mage? He has the robe, the antenna, and a face that could easily match the black masks of the abyss mages. He's just pocket sized, with wings. But we've also never had an Animo Abyss Mage, so maybe those have wings. We don't know. Is Venti from the Abyss? Is that possible? You know what? I don't want to think about it. Anyway, here's what this all boils down to for me. The power of God, the true God, the original God, is likely represented as an eye in Genshin. The pinnacle manifestation of which may be the sustainer herself. So if then the Eye of God is a vision that grants abilities to the user based on their, as Kazuha says, criteria, then what of delusions? By the name alone, we can assume that the user loses sight of something, likely their identity? To delude oneself into power, to lose oneself in the abyss? To mask and hide oneself in order to pretend to be something or someone else and still have the whole process be reversible? Maybe? Maybe without a mask to conceal one's identity, then the abyss might corrode someone so quickly that they are forced into a mask that actually replaces their face, regardless of their choice. I mean, is that not the purpose of masks? A substitute for one's identity, whether temporary or permanent? I'd love to hear what you guys think. So thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. You guys rock. If you enjoyed this theory, there's lots more to come, so stick around. If you can't wait, why not check out the Conria Lore Discord server? Links in the description box and maybe I'll see you there. Oh, and uh, just a reminder that any corrections or notes for this video will be pinned in the comment below. Make sure you check it. In the meantime, this is Ashikai. Searching for yet another rabbit hole to fall down. Oh dear.